Uh, that definitely changes things. Now we went from a, you know, Palutena probably trying to rush down Jewel to... Both of these is, characters yeah. trying to set up something against yeah. one another. Now the real question that I'm wondering, how is Utopian Bay going to get off the ledge? Because uh, it feels like with Palu, Palu kind of has options against things like Arcfire. Uh, but Banjo, I mean, I guess yeah. you can Wonder Wing through mm -hmm. it, but that is inherently risky in and of itself, and you can only do that for so many times. And right there, you see Ooze still having enough time to shield, but he dropped to shield, definitely not anticipating the second Ugg fight, and Jewel getting 89% out of that 1 into 104, out of that 1 sequence, just because Ray dropped to shield a little bit early, getting hit with a second Ugg fight, and that is the kind of follow-ups that you see coming from Jewel, the way he's just able to condition your shielding. I will say though, notice that Token Ray is slowly but surely gaining stage control. Yes. Jewel is, you know, charging up his his uh, you know, his thunder, but in the process he gets back into the corner, yes. and that's where the neutral from Ooh. okay. He kind of went for the risky play there with that Wonder Wing. And although against a lot of characters that would be safe on shield, not you when have you have Thoron. Thoron. Yeah. yeah. Thoron can literally go across the entire stage. So, so smart from Jewel just to have that on deck because you don't see Jewel go for Thoron as nearly as much as other Goblin Mains, usually trying to opt for um, Arc Thunder, but he knew that if they were to cross up his shield, Thoron would be the perfect golden follow-up just to punish him for it. But you notice there, once again, Utopian Mage just barely encroaches on his space. He had him in the corner, and right there, he actually got mm -hmm. the up air on his right. full hop to get out, and we're in a kind of a rinse-repeat situation here. I yep. like the idea of going for that spring, but it doesn't seem to be super impactful. Yep. But cleans up with the stock regardless, getting that nice ledge trap dash attack is enough to finish it, absolutely. And I feel like in the set so far right now, like, Jewel is just struggling to find, like, a landing option. Because, like, you see, like, first of all, like, the way that Banjo is able to, like, throw out those ridiculously disjointed up airs and nails, and when you, you have such a heavy character like Robin, it's so difficult to get down. And another thing about the matchup, those grenades he's launching counteract the Arc Thunder. Yes. So it's, for him, it's like lots of utility in that one move mm -hmm. that, especially if he's in a lead, especially if he's trying to gain a little bit of space, because he can gain space while yes. throwing out a, uh, pooping out one of those nades. And right now, this is very, very quick carries for Jewel. You, uh, I love that conditioning for Ray, just like baiting out the jump and punishing with another aerial. And if you were to run, run into the grenade, that would just been like free stage control and more percent. Amazing parry punish with the multi jab. Um, like perfectly aware of the spacing of it. And right now, this is like so difficult for Jewel to get back drifting under the spring. All right, that was, he finally went for the roll out of the corner. But Utopian Ray still able to catch yep. it just by, you know, you notice he's occupying this space. It's like sort of at roll distance. And when he sees yep. Jewel try and jump out of the corner, he'll meet him with an up air. If he sees him try and roll, even there he was able to cover it. And he actually yep. got a stop off of that grab. Ooh, like he was reading a drop down with the Thoron, but unfortunately not being able to get it. Pying on a little bit more damage with the Elf Thunder. But again, as you were saying, like Jewel is dropping so much stage control, choosing to up for the charge of the neutral beat. And right Ooh. there. Finally, turning the bad situation of up, yep. being at the ledge around. That arc fire was so big, manages to get what was honestly a pretty early stock considering Banjo's weight. Yep. And it's like one of those things where like, once you uh, once the arc fire hits a shield, that is such a precarious situation to be in. Because you don't know if he's going to throw out another one. You don't know if he's going to go run up and grab. You don't know if he's going to try to read one of your goals. So it just like puts you in this really, really dangerous rock, paper, scissors situation where more often than not, you will be getting severely punished for it. Not to mention, if you drop your shield preemptively, you're going to get hit with that arc fire. Now, I got to say, about Utopian Bray in this matchup, he just feels like a man with a plan. He is doing his game plan so effectively, where he's just putting him out the corner, throwing out these grenades. I'm just curious to see what adaptation Jewel can even go through to get out of the corner. Yep. Oh, Ooh, he grabbed him the grenade. So, so good because it effectively reset neutral despite Jewel being in disadvantage. And the gentleman pushing him back so far off stage. And if Ray comes back with an aggressive Ooh. option. <gasps> The grenade, that was so smart from Utopian Rain, knowing that the grenade would explode right when he needed it to help cover him. That was, that was, ge that was genuinely brilliant if it was intentional. And if it wasn't, it still worked out for his favor. Regardless, almost getting the lead on the goal, but not able oh, to punish off stage, he doesn't have a lot of places to go. He has four charges on his tome, which is going to be super, super dangerous. That was so smart. You saw he grabbed him, and he waited just an instant. Didn't pummel, but he just waited to make sure that that grenade yes. would come out. Ooh. 
This is such a last hit situation here. The one thing about it, though, is that... Honestly, Jewel threatens from a good distance much more than Ray does. Yep. Oh. And the back here, just calling out the, the, the raw jump. So that was that was a roll, actually. He, that was a roll. He, he jumped, and then after, he jumped he after the yeah. roll. But it's like sort of he read the roll and then mm -hmm. just panicked option. Yep. And he was able to go. Oh. But uh, so really, <laughs> then I think, first of all, FDE is really bad for Jewel in this matchup. Yep. Like, really, really having no platforms, no nothing way to, to help get him get in out on of, not just It's not a matter of getting in, it's a matter of getting out. Mm -hmm. He's just being put at the corner, and he has to roll, he has to jump, and every time it feels like Utopian Ray is catching him, and he's not yep. necessarily doing these huge combos. Like, when Jewel gets a hit in, he does like 70% or something. But. But it's just so hard to find those hits when you're just so busy getting juggled, but they're still going to be running it back to Final Destination. Really need brave oh, choice. so smart. Uh, maybe not so smart. 50% <laughs> from an Arcfire, Arcfire back here. Really lovely conversions coming from Jewel. F smashing his shield. Of course, not safe in the slide is getting thrown. And I'm actually and surprised up he got punished with the grab right there. Mm. But anyway, these guys are neck and neck and percent. But I think in that last game, was actually this is for the so, so game. dangerous for Ray right now, but Ray using the most out of his mobility to maneuver around the arc fire. And that's the thing, is that uh, I think that Jewel has to start covering that higher option. Because otherwise, yeah, he can just go high. Yeah. Banjo has an infinite recovery, you know? Mm -hmm. He might probably seem to be doing that so much at these percents, but... And if, an 11 back here, just like continuing to perpetuate, like Ray's disadvantage and Ray not dying quite yet. And this should be Jewel stop to take such good patience. Such good like restraint, like knowing he has to one wing right now, or else he'll just simply won't make it back. It's double up till that second one catches him coming out of the very animation. Oh, that's he might get punished! And oh, right and he there. still does. Honestly, the considering the range that Robin has, mm -hmm. even like it feels like Wonder Wing isn't safe on hit at low percent. And getting the Nosferatu, and every single time you see Jewel actually throw out the Nosferatu, it always connects. It's like when he is so, so sure on the position of the opponent. But also, I feel like what is really, really important to note right now is Ray has to mix up the way he is reacting to the arc fires on his shield. He is dropping them preemptively, and then getting hit by it, and then getting losing so much percent as a result. He has to either roll or I hold the shield a little bit that. longer. So if you notice, Jewel, he's not trying to get out of the corner. He's taking his time. He's yep. just waiting. Oh, this could be really bad for him off stage, though. He's not enough to make it back. The lightest of eggs just Able to get his it. recovery and 79% for the top anyway. Uh, go, trying to go for the ledge jump, but unfortunately not being able to get it. Uh, right now, Ray did not uh, set up any situation successfully with the grenade. I'm sorry, I'm loving the mobility that Utopian Ray is showing with these B reverses. Just staying, making sure to not get hit by any standing arc fires. I think that's kind of what's really yeah. helping him out the most. He's sort of at a range that's already yeah. uncomfortable for Robin to deal with. Get oh. the hitbox extension on the arc fire. And why you really, really want to commend about Jules play right now is like even when he's getting knocked off stage you don't see him desperate to DI back in. Yeah. You see Ray going for those four fairs, you see him going for those back heels, but still not being able to connect it. I just want to comment on the, the neutral state here. Now he's trying to cover high. He's going for these instant up airs, instant mm -hmm. forward airs, instant neutral airs, but they're not actually working because now Utopian Ray just one step ahead. He's staying much more grounded. And right now, this is definitely where Jewel wants to be. He wants to be ledge trapping Gray, but knowing that he does not have a, a 11 or maybe even the fire to active with the gentleman, not quite enough to take it yet. You see him start setting up the arc fires, over committing and getting Wonder Wing. That's definitely an option he wanted to bait out rather than get hit by it, but getting the secondary hit of the up, falling up into the back here. Beautiful stuff, but. Yep. Just and that's like that. honestly FD kind of coming into a, a factor again. He had no plan. Yeah. When he was respawning, didn't have anywhere to really yeah. retreat to. So in the end, I I commend Jewel's play. He's such a fantastic player. Yep. I do question the counter pick back to yeah. FD. I think that was maybe a comfort pick thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but just the way that neutral was played by Ray and the way that he was trapping him in the corner, I think that having a stage with even if it's just like PS2 level platforms might have really helped him out right there. Especially because like.